Good morning. You are back with the Vermont House Government Operations Committee. Um, we started out this morning hearing from our um, Executive Director of Racial Equity, Susanna Davis, and also from um, the H196 bill sponsor, um, uh, Kevin Christie. Thank you for joining us again, Kevin, um, from coming up the stairs from the uh, Judiciary or uh, Education Committee. Is that where you are now? I can't remember. Judiciary. Judiciary, okay. Yeah, it's, uh, it's hard to keep track of where folks land now that we don't have the opportunity to poke our heads in other committee rooms while they're doing their work. Um, but thank you, uh, Coach Christie, for coming uh, to join us again. Um, we have with us um, Vermont Racial Justice Alliance, um, Mark Hughes. And Mark, I would love to welcome you to share your thoughts on uh, the concepts that are outlined in the short form bill H-196, which proposes to add some staff to the um, Racial Equity Director's Office. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I know everybody's been on all kinds of Zoom calls today, um, so I'm just going to say it. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. All right. <clears throat> so um, I appreciate Mark Hughes, Racial Justice Alliance uh, Executive Director, uh, for the record. I appreciate the opportunity to come and, um, and share a couple thoughts on uh, what's going on with the Racial Equity Executive Director. I'm sure you can appreciate uh, from the work of the Alliance Injustice for All in 2017. Uh, what emerged from that was Act 54, if you recall, and for those of you who are freshmen, um, not to call Representative Verhofsky out, but um, I think, I don't know who else is a freshman on here, but maybe you weren't watching, but Act 54 is Racial Disparities in the Criminal and Juvenile Justice System Advisory Panel, and I think you recall those of you who were around that from that emerged the uh, Attorney General's and Human Rights Commission's um, task force where we um, reported out racial disparities across all systems of state government. Um, and then following that, the, the next year that served as momentum for us to introduce S-281 in the Senate, uh, which ultimately produced the uh, racial equity executive director and panel. Um, I think it should, uh, you should note uh, and I want to, you know, place heavy emphasis on this. Uh, we came before you asking for that uh, to be an independent commission uh, in, uh, in 2018. We still feel that way. Uh, I also would like to note that the, um, that I did observe the uh, testimony of uh, Representative Christie. Hey, Coach, how you doing? Good to see you. Uh, and also uh, the uh, testimony of um, the Racial Equity Executive Director this morning. So all of the, that testimony is noted. Um, I also would like to just also preface, preface what it is that I would offer on this bill with the fact that um, the, um, the testimony offered from the Racial Equity Executive Director uh, is testimony that is testimony that must be framed um, in her capacity as a political appointee as well as uh, serving at the pleasure of a governor. So um, I'm sure there may have been things that you could have heard from her um, if it was otherwise. Um, I think the, um, that is consistent throughout all her testimony. And I just want to make it very clear, as much as I love and adore Susanna Davis and was happy when she arrived and consult with her frequently. And um, the, at, at the end of the day, uh, we must never forget that, you know, her in her capacity. Well, in short, I will just say that we asked for an independent commission for a purpose, for a reason. It was very clear. We made it very clear to you that we didn't feel strongly that she would be able to operate to her fullest capacity uh, without uh, having an independence, a certain level of independence. I just want to just loop all the way back to that. Um, the, um, and also, obviously, the testimony of Kevin Coach Christie, uh, who's black as I am, but still yet a legislator. I just want to make it clear 
uh, that at the end of the day, he is a legislator. I'm pretty sure you all knew that, but sometimes I like to show up and be the consummate stater of the obvious. Uh, so when he does show up and provide that testimony, we just keep in mind that he does have legislative plates on his car and he does operate from a different level of privilege that we do with all due respect uh, with any testimony that he might bring about any policy that may come before you. So, <clears throat> um, and then uh, it, just in opening, I would also uh, uh, just, uh, uh, just thank Andrea. I think there was some confusion in the backfield. We tried to call an audible uh, and get myself as well as some other folks from the Alliance in tomorrow. That communication that came across today was intended uh, for me to be on your, your calendar tomorrow. I only found out that I would be before you about 10 minutes ago. <clears throat> so, um, but I'm glad to be here. I uh, want to give a shout out to the work of the committee and, and also all of the, the uh, great and exciting work. You, you, you know the government operations is my favorite committee. You know that, okay? Um, so also, uh, especially want to lift up the, um, the vice chair, uh, uh, Representative Gannon, you're still in that position, right? Okay, so gl it's good to see you back. Um, uh, so uh, the, as far as the bill, it's the, the proposed bill itself, we certainly support uh, this, this work uh, that this, you know, we have been asking, you know, if you may recall that we, we asked uh, for a, a incredibly, we, we asked for a, a robust uh, racial equity uh, capability within, um, you know, as an independent commission uh, two years ago. Uh, we asked for additions to this office in, in you know, I think uh, Representative Christie had mentioned that our first round at uh, seeking to get this position uh, fulfilled uh, was vetoed. Uh, An executive order was issued. I think that is still on record. In fact, I don't think it was ever defeated by the legislature. Um, and, um, you know, during that process, when we came back in, in 18, uh, the Act 9 is actually a special session uh, policy that was passed. Uh, it was during the, uh, during the budget process in 2018. When we came back uh, and got this, this position approved, uh, the, the only obstacle that really stood between us and getting this position in place was the fact that the governor vetoed it because he did not have the ability to uh, unilaterally terminate this position. And, and he deemed that to be constitutionally um, uh, inappropriate. The ledge council would go on after that to, uh, to indicate otherwise, but the ship had already sh sailed. Uh, so we did come back, uh, but it was always our intention to have this office staffed um, it was always our intention to um, to bring forward a um, a, a robust uh, capability. Now, uh, before I go into the policy itself, I do want to pivot really quickly and talk a little bit about data uh, because it was always our intention as well to have a data apparatus as well as a capability within this office. What do I mean by apparatus? I'm glad you asked. The, the apparatus piece uh, it, we were talking about was is we, we wanted to see the, tech, the technology infrastructure implemented. Some of you may recall these conversations and I think most of it fell on the floor in, Jeanette, in Senator White's uh, committee uh, on the other side of the building. Uh, it was our intention to implement a, techno a, a, a platform and an infrastructure which could correlate, aggregate uh, as well as um, aggregate, correlate, as well as provide presentation level uh, analytics of racial equity, racially disaggregated data across all systems of state government. They said that is the purview under which she is operating. And uh, so I think it's unrealistic to expect her to have those expectations in her policy to say, hey, you, we want you to collect data and not give her a place to put it or not give her a place to a, a, method, a method whereby which she would analyze it. So I'd, I'd ask the committee to really take that into consideration. Um, and the pivot that I'm making is, is over to a, a House Judiciary. Uh, and um, so I'm glad that uh, the, um, that, that Coach Christie is here, that, that Representative Christie is here because I do know that there is, uh, I think it's a House bill that's emerging that is referred to as the Bureau of Racial Justice Statistics, the Bureau of Racial Justice Statistics Advisory Panel. And this is an executive di director of racial equity and justice statistics that is coming out of that committee. This is relevant and I do, I do understand you may think I might be wondering, but I know there was a conversation about data today as justification and data 
her position does start and end with the, 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 the collection, uh, the, 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 the correlation and the analysis of racially disaggregated data. And that is how she, that is how we measure our progress. That is how we create policy. Uh, so, so I wanna make sure that you understand it. I, I, I still am on point here. Uh, so this, this bill actually seeks to appropriate 539,960 bucks. I think this is gonna be coming out uh, in the near future. And, and the reason why I bring this up is, is not as a counterpoint to this, but as an augmentation, because I think when we're reimagining, because there's nothing in this policy and this policy is 10 pages long, they don't even mention the racial equity executive director. And, but it only pertains to justice data, so-called justice data, I stand corrected. So it only pertains to the, the data that's being collected in the justice system. This is, um, you know, this is relevant because there's a good model here whereby which there is an individual uh, with a staff uh, who would have that responsibility and, and hopefully a capability to collect these data, but to have it completely separate in a whole nother universe from the racial equity executive director is, is a boondoggle at best. So I, I think that what we ought to consider is, is as we're having this conversation here is, is that we closely consider the creative work that's come out of the, the judiciary in the house, which is, which would ordinarily be just be, you know, pretty close. You could just like, she, like you said, Madam Chair, poke your head in there. So, um, and the other thing is, is the expansion of the, the data, the data points. And if there are no established data points as they are prescribed here in housing, in education, uh, in health services access, in economic development as well, then what we should do is we should be flagging those areas. Um, it, but we should at least provide that framework, the infrastructure, the technology, because if we're going to if we're going to throw some money at this thing and we're really serious, if this is a if racism is a is, is a is a public health emergency. And if uh, we are really seeking a moral budget, then what we should be doing is, is we should be making our placing our full commitment to getting this done, uh, unlike what we did a couple or two or three years ago. So I'll leave that alone, and, and I'm sure Coach can tell you more about that particular policy. Um, and we're, I, I'm, I will um, turn the corner, and instead of uh, going to um, the uh, the particulars in this policy, and actually I'm almost done, is is that um, there is a um, a policy that is emerging in short form that we have submitted that addresses the racial equity executive director. It will probably be released if not this afternoon or in, in the coming days, probably maybe the top of next week or something like that. The statement of bur a purpose of that bill was to add to FTE positions is to add to new uh, positions, one policy and research analyst and one outreach and education coordinator. Uh, what I'm doing is, is I'm just showing the parallels, but I, I will show where we contrast if, if, I, if you could just be patient with me for just, just a little attitude here. Uh, so what we have is, is um, this is uh, the outreach and education. Okay, so then in Title III, uh, again in Chapter 68, this, is, this was designated to support the, uh, the work of the racial equity. Uh, oh, looky there, it actually gets larger. The racial equity in, um, and to mitigate systemic racism in all branches of state government. So the, the bill also provides, uh, it the purpose is to provide, now where I'm going here is, is I'm encouraging you to, um, to, to marry these bills up, you know, to, to figure out if, if there's something that you'd be willing to entertain and we'll come back and provide some testimony on this in particular uh, later. But the bill also proposes to provide uh, the, the director with the, the, with the responsibility because this bill is also not just about capacity, it's also about authority, it's also about empowering the office, which I didn't really hear this morning. Um, so the bill, it also proposes to provide the executive director with responsibility for statewide racial impact assessment program. You talked a little bit about racial impact assessment it is actually somewhat beyond the scope of her, of her, enacting, uh, her enacting statute. 
what we what I'm what we're proposing is is that that be codified, just like we tried to do it a couple of years ago. Racial impact assessment program um, as a part of her responsibilities to assess the racial impact of existing and emerging policies and statewide racial equity monitoring program, tasked with continually continuously reviewing hiring, appointment, and promotion processes across the state government. So expansion of responsibility a little bit because we know these to be areas of concern. Uh, the bill also proposes uh, to establish the racial equity, uh, a, uh, a, the racial equity programs, a statewide framework for ensuring, for ensuring uniform policy, systemic racism awareness training and data collection and um, racial impact assessments across state government and agencies. And then uh, towards the end, we, we propose to establish and fund the infrastructure uh, for systemic co uh, collection, systemic collection of racially disaggregated data across all state government systems, including but not limited to housing and education, employment, health services access, economic development, and the so-called justice system. Um, the bill also compels all state agencies to comply with the programs of the racial equity director. Uh, surrounding data collection, policy tra uh, training, racial impact assessment and hiring, appointment and promotion processes. This bill requires all state agencies to integrate racial equity compliance into annual evaluation requirements and the individual late, uh, at individual as well as state government levels, okay? This bill also establishes that the racial equity director office be an established body that is independent of any agency of branch government. Uh, we, sought, we seek to appropriate $1.25 million to get this done. Uh, this is the technology infrastructure uh, to support. And again, these are, um, these are iterative steps. Uh, the, the first tranche to get a couple of FTEs on the ground, obviously you, you're probably looking at a quarter mil. Uh, we'd, we'd be looking at another million dollars uh, to initiate, you know, the feasibility study as well as the impact assessment surrounding the technology, infrastructure, implementation, and so forth. That is going to be an elongated process, but we need to start it and we need to start it with commitment. Uh, and that will be to, uh, for the collection and the management of uh, racially uh, disaggregated data. So that is the, those are the similarities and contrasts to uh, the policy that is emerging as, as opposed to the one that's on the table before you, um, there is a specific emphasis that I place quite intentionally uh, on the work that is emerging in judiciary. Uh, there is also a, a specific emphasis that I placed uh, as well on the need for independence and authority uh, for this particular uh, capability. Uh, I thank you uh, for your time. Thank you for inviting me. I would love to get some other folks out uh, from the Vermont Racial Justice Alliance uh, and others to, um, to, you know, to testify uh, before you on this matter. I'd love to also get out and talk to you more about the whole idea of a, um, the, the combination of this uh, so-called uh, public safety uh, apparatus uh, that, that's going on as well. So thank you for your time. I'm, I'm happy to answer any questions that you have uh, and I'll just stop there. Thank you so much for being with us this morning. And, and I apologize for the crossed wires. Uh, we certainly can make some time to have you and, um, and, and or other folks back tomorrow to, to talk more about this. Um, I have a noon meeting that I have to jump to right now. So I'm gonna leave Representative Gannon to facilitate questions, but I just wanna say thank you for, for coming. Um, thank you for, for being uh, a voice for the, our continued focus on, on these important issues. Um, and so committee, go ahead uh, with questions and um, Mark, I'll see you again another day. I appreciate you, Madam Chair. Any questions? Oops, okay. Um, There's a hand. Mike first and then um, Peter. Yeah, any questions? Yeah, Mark, thanks for coming in. Um, I, I just wanted to say, I, I really appreciate you and the Alliance, you know, trying to help us get this work right. Cause 
what we're talking about with these two positions uh, here in H196, uh, it does relate to that work that's going on in judiciary, going on in healthcare, and we've got that tendency to be siloed. And so I just want to invite you to, you know, continue to give us feedback and make sure these things stay connected and that they aren't siloed so that we can do the work effectively. Um, and I, I know, you know, Representative Christie and others will be a part of that too, but um, yeah, I just want to invite you to continue to do that and say that, you know, got your email uh, as well about um, the uh, presentation that we had in the, the joint session yesterday um, and that <laughs> we will, before we take any action there, definitely want to hear from a lot of more voices. So I uh, just wanted you to know that we had heard that. Representative McCarthy, thank you uh, so much. And thank you for the, the positive feedback and, and all the work that you're doing. I really appreciate you and, and uh, your voice. Great, Peter. Uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, John. I, um, <clears throat> not having the benefit of, of looking at or reading the um, bill presented or before the Judiciary Committee, what, what I'm struggling with given the testimony this morning from Susanna, um, I, I just think even with two assistants, uh, it's pretty obvious that, that as uh, uh, I think Tanya mentioned, this is an incredibly daunting uh, assignment or list of duties uh, that is slowly aggregating. And I'm just wondering, uh, back to taking the advice of Susanna, what is practicable, even with three people, I'm wondering whether or not data collection, uh, and I'm distinguishing, by the way, uh, collection from uh, massaging analysis, uh, conclusions, uh, correlations, the kind of analysis uh, that is possible once you have disaggregated data. But to go back, I'm wondering whether or not the burden of collection as it is in the VSB and the judiciary should fall on the relevant uh, agencies and not be uh, lumped on top of uh, the other seemingly, from my point of view, more important things than simply collection. I understand the technology uh, that would enable uh, analysis, correlation, uh, massaging, all that really needs to be uh, housed with the executive director, but I worry that the, the executive director would be spending all her time uh, reprimanding various agencies for failing to do one thing or another uh, and, and not get to the more important policy work, uh, which is identifying uh, systematic problems that uh, should be called out. <laughs> Thank you. Rep Representative um, Anthony, um, first of all, I just want to give a shout out to Barry because it's one of my favorite towns uh, in the state. Um, so um, I, I spent a lot of time in Washington County. I've only been up in Chittenden for a couple of years, so I'm not that Chittenden guy. Um, and I, but I, I appreciate uh, what it is um, that the point that you bring forward, and let me tell you why. Um, because you know, as we were deliberating on the creation of this position in 2018, you know, we covered all of this and we talked about, you know, not just the importance of data and not just the importance of an infrastructure being implemented, but also who's going to, you know, who's going to manage it, who's going to be the, what we call business owner of the, the project and its implementation and its turnover into product to production. That makes sense that the business owner you know, because I'm, I'm an old IT guy, I come out of a cyberspace, okay, so the, so I understand, you know, how, you know, project implementation, project management, program management, so the business owner of this particular project, we, we'd have to understand it to be the racial equity uh, director, the racial equity officer. Um, so that's one important point, but it doesn't mean that she has to, she, their office would be responsible for the administration because you have economies of scales that, 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 are, that, that increase you know, when you have shared resources in the enterprise. So what we're really talking about is, is some, some type of deployment of a, an implementation of a, a technology infrastructure that is a, it's centralized. And it's actually just a point of aggregation because believe me, Almost every one of these systems that are currently deployed are already collecting 
some type of racially disaggregated data or have the ability to be configured to do so in some way, whether it's at the application level, whether it's at the database level or whatever. So I don't want to get too much in the weeds, but really what we're talking about is we're talking about pushing and pulling data across the enterprise. We just put something on the freaking Mar on Mars today, okay? So we can do this. So th this, is, this is about, you know, this is about, you know, having the political will to do it. Uh, and, and it's, you know, you're going to get a lot from the business units and they're going to be saying, oh, we can't do that. It costs too much. You know, again, it's a centralized, it's a centralized infrastructure where we would be deploying technology where data can be aggregated, uh, where it could, where it could be uh, correlated and where it could be analyzed and so forth. Most of the data collection, as we know it, it's simple as our daily activities and our input into all of these systems. You know, it's just a matter of being able to, ext to extract that. Uh, from the appropriate areas, or first of all, determine which areas are, are the appropriate areas, to go in and find those data, extract them, and then to push or pull them to the appropriate areas for that particular uh, business use, which is um, racially disaggregated data analysis. This is going to help you. You asked this morning, how is this going to help us? When you get this, your policy is going to be better. Your policy is going to be better because it's data-driven, hopefully. Right, it's not crime research group data driven. It's data driven in another way. So, um, so I appreciate your question. I hope that helps. Um, and um, your point is well taken. Any other questions? Um, I, I have a couple questions, Mark, for you. First of all, uh oh. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, first of all, thank the big you guys on me. <laughs> thank you for testifying today, and, and thank you for your comments with respect to our joint hearing yesterday. Um, the optics of that were not good, um, being surrounded no. by um, a number of law enforcement officers who I wasn't even sure why they were there, um, given that we were doing a walkthrough of a bill. Um, I was. It, it was just, it was odd. So I appreciate your comments with respect to that. Um, so my question is, um, you raised a good point about judicial, judicial data. Um, and, and I note that we also have a bill in healthcare, um, H210, which deals with creating an office of health equity. Mm -hmm. um, and I just That's want right. your thoughts on this. I mean, should all of this be centralized under the racial equity director? I mean, does that make more sense or, or should we be spreading it among different state agencies? I, you, you cut out right at the end, but I, I got it. I think I got your question. And um, H210 is one of ours. Uh, you're, gonna, you're gonna see some, some other ones emerging. Um, you're going to see um, racism as a, a public health emergency, a joint resolution that's going to be probably dropping, if not today or over the next couple of days. Um, we're going to get the rest of that Freeman language out of uh, Title 24, uh, the appendix of Title 24 on all of the charters we're going to be working on. Uh, you'll see another reparations bill in your committee, uh, shadow slavery reparations bills coming back. Uh, cultural and economic empowerment, home and land ownership, uh, data, data, racial, data and racial equity, which is what we're talking about right now, uh, public, so-called public safety, and also even, yes, Representative Gannon, the cannabis policy is coming back too for racial equity. So we're, we're doing a lot of stuff. In question is, is the, um, you know, and we got some traction with Senator Sears and and uh, and, and Senator Benning and 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 also uh, maybe not so much Senator Pearson, but we'll talk about that later. But that we've got some traction on that. We'll talk more about it. So, in a perfect world, you know, I think there's a possibility where you know what we're talking about is we're not talking about a director. And what's really strange about this policy that I told you about out in over in uh, judiciary, and I'm not picking on anybody here, okay? We just, we got to just tell, you know, just say what it is because if, we're, if we get so nice to each other that we're not really saying what we really want to say, then we're not going to really do the best thing for everybody that we're trying to do it for. You know, just like today when Sudana said, um, you know, I, I can't answer that question. You know, I can't go, so it was a, it was a bridge too far. Well, why? The reason why is because she is a political appointee, because she works for the governor. So she can't say that. And that is where that ends. And, I, and the reason why I bring that point up is, is because we got to see that for what it is and understand that, that we have constraints within the systems that we've designed that are, that are precluding us from being able to get the work done that needs to get done for the people who need it most. So that goes back to that independence. So again, 
you know, when you think about this structure of what this ought to really look like, you know, and this is just, let, let me just spitball for about 30 seconds. This is, I think, you know, in a perfect world, what we have is, is we've, we've got a, 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 a department or an agency or, you know, a, we tried to make her a commissioner for crying out loud, okay? So we've got a, a commission, a public safety, an independent uh, racial equity commission in these functions that are health equity related, these functions uh, that are uh, judiciary um, data related, or I should say, I don't, I don't wanna just stay on data because we're talking about policy training data. Uh, we're talking about you know, how we go about reviewing existing and emerging policies. We're talking about hiring promotions as well as appointment processes. Um, so it's the whole shebang, but as they pertain to these particular entities, these particular, what we say, we'll just call them social constructs for lack of a better term, then she could have those that capacity under her. So what we've been doing is, is just segmented by function. You are policy, you are outreach, you are training and education. But what we ought to be segmenting it by is, is the, the, the constructs that we have within our our state government, and because that's where the the um, just a little bit more than thirty seconds, but that's where the 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 disparities that are are being produced, these um, these uh, determinants that we call housing, education, employment, health service, economic development, so called criminal justice, those disparities are being produced from those systems. So I hope I beat that into the ground enough for you. Um, but yeah, the one word answer, yeah, probably so. And I hope that the will is here in this committee this year, because folks, if we can't do it now, I mean, now, today, February 18th, 2021, you know, with the last four years in our rearview mirror, in the middle of a global pandemic and a racial reckoning, which we've probably never seen before, we, and we'll probably never see again, if we can't do it now, when are we going to do it? Thank you, Mark. Um, any other questions from any members? Well, thank you very much for coming today, Mark. And I'm sure we'll see you, you again. Um, I appreciate uh, your again and everything. And again, uh, Mr. Chairman, I, I appreciate the time. Good. Thank you so much. I wish you all a great session, and thank you for the hard work that you're uh, that you guys are putting in. I really appreciate you all. You got again. You're my favorite committee. <laughs>